this is Chuck with Pocket Snakes. I thought I would show you some interesting techniques I've been working on uh, for tapering down and narrowing down whips and the bellies of whips that you might find interesting and useful. So on this whip, I'm down to 12 plate same whip I was working on in previous videos. So there's six strands on the right, two burgundy on each side, with two black separating them. And I want to unpin this core where I've got a four plate and I want to drop it to three, then two, then one, then zero for the core very rapidly. So I'm going to show you this method. I'm going to move the pin to where I want the whip to taper down some so that I can further refine the taper in this area. And I put the pin up here and I'm going to unplate the way it's up. And So that's where the two strands are pinned together. So this strand that comes around is pinned to this. These two top strands are pinned together. Now, I left this core really long because you can't cut things shorter. And I have other things I do with pieces that are you know, a couple feet long. So I'm going to take my paracord needle and stick it on the end of this strand, which is the top strand. And I'm going to get the length of it, and I'm going to poke it inside of this strand that's coming down. Going to go in about three, about three inches. I'm going to poke it out the side. And then I'm going to pull it through and try and lay it flat. I dropped the needle because I'm on camera and it's just wanting to misbehave. Uh, so you can see that went down about three inches. I'm going to pin it in place. Check it back up just a touch. And I'm going to cut it off. And that strand I'll use for something else. Probably some Arizona fly swatters. Okay. And then on the back side here, I'm going to take one of the pin strands. do have to be careful because there's a bunch of pins sticking all the way through things so they will poke your hands if you're not careful. But. Screw on. Now this is a Tandy leather needle lodge that I've sanded I find it easier than having the bulge in it. And wrap this strand through. I'm going to lay it over. I'm going to penetrate both of the previous ones. And bring it down. 
about three inches below the last one. That, by the way, pins this strand in. And then I'm going to chuck it back a little bit. This keeps the furries from coming through your whip. So now that strand's in the center. Paracord's a neat material. Especially since, you know, you don't think about how versatile it is or how well it folds. And the fact that you can pin it is really a beautiful thing. Put a needle back on this one. You can drop the needle and pull it flat. I'm going to roll it just like it was braided. I'm going to put it into the strand that I just put in, which went into the center. Now, I should say this is 650 cord instead of 550. point you can take this pin out as well. Then you find where it drops and you want to go about three inches or three finger widths further. Pop it out the side. And so you'll notice that this goes from a four plate to this sheath, it then drops, drops, and then drops. Chuck it back a little bit, snip it off. This is one way to avoid, especially when you have mixed media, one way to avoid having your strands have furries. Now I'm going to go back to plating, because I can. And I'm going to plate over this area. And the diameter will drop because it's no longer going over itself, now it's going through itself. The neat part is, is this method makes this very uh, very nice drop in diameter with no dropping of strands immediately. <clears throat> and you can control exactly where you want the drops to occur. And then I can pull these strands into the core for a distance as well as I drop the black strands out because eventually it's just going to be the burgundy strands in this whip. <clears throat> I'm going to call this a red tail, like a red tail hawk. It will be a red tail whip and it will eventually drop down to two strands pulled through themselves much like you would do a twisted, uh, twisted finish or twisted falls on a whip. This one will drop to two strands of 275 that are twisted together with a little blood knot or bleed knot, depending on how you say it, where you pull it, the strands through each other as a way to stop it through each other twice. Pull the back strand through the front strand. I'll show you that as well. finished a 
series of 12 there. Now please play with these, make a few whips with this method, and you'll see that you can create some beautiful ideas in tapering where the strands won't ever come out. Whatever, you know, pop up in ways that you don't expect. And you can create, you know, consistently tapered, finely tapered whips that move the way you want to. And the more of this you play with, the more ideas you might have. And please share it with other whip makers, because some of this stuff work in progress. I've been doing this for, well, six years, seven years full, almost seven years full time. I got kind of obsessed with <laughs> breeding whips and breeding reins and breeding beautiful things. Oops. I've apparently finished another pass of 12. So all my strands are off to the left. Okay, and I'm down to about 20 pounds, although this little transition area, I'm going to do it about 25 pounds. And then as I go down, I will drop the tension, and the whip will tension up on its own. 